Good afternoon guys, Jesse Miller with Sessions Recording in the Florida Keys. Uh, today my studio tip is uh, old school reamp of bass guitar. Now, uh, what I like to do, uh, and I always like rhythm sections playing together when you can get it, uh, to, is to set up the drummer and the bass player playing together in the room, let them get a vibe going, uh, and, and slowly get them on the headphones. Uh, it, initial start, they're both playing live. Bass player in the amp, drummer at the drum set. Get them on the earphones. I use the extreme isolation headphones. They're really, they're not high fidelity, uh, but for isolation, particularly in the rhythm section, they work really well. Extreme isolation. Get them on the phones. Get them happy. I've got a DI on the bass, by the way, from the get-go. Once they're getting real happy, I'll sneak in the live room and uh, turn the bass player's amp off. He's going to hop around a little bit, so I always say, you know, hey, let's try it this way. Take him just DI to your DAW or tape machine when you're tracking, okay? Get the drums nice and live in the room. Track your track. Do all your bass punch-ins DI. Get them in the control room if you have to. Get the bass track the way you want. Once you've got the bass track happening, and it's presumably in this setup, along with the drummer. You get a really good vibe. Two guys in a room. We get good isolation on the drums because the bass is DI. Now we got a bass DI. Reamp. Take your line out from your workstation. Uh, if you're using a native system and you, you've limited on outputs, you can use the solo button and just come directly out of the PC at line level and use a box like this if you can. This is a, a, a studio reamper. It takes uh, line level and converts it to uh, what will load the input of the amplifier better. Uh, the pickup, as it were. This is normally plugged into an instrument. So you want to get it, if you can, from line level back to an instrument level. Uh, you can actually take the line and jam it right into the amp input, but you're not going to get the same uh, loading on the input, it can affect the way the amp works. And if you've left the bass amp set up the way the bass player had it when they were initially jamming earlier on before you had them on phones, you just turn on the amp, mic it up. I like to use two mics on a bass, uh, a, a, a large dynamic to get the, the lows and maybe a smaller dynamic to maybe get the highs so you end up with three bass tracks. If you want to take it another step further, you could even put the, uh, the lower large dynamic like this D12 on a 15, say, or a ported cabinet uh, and move it off and leave the smaller dynamic, it could be a 57, can be anything actually, uh, and mic up the 10s. Uh, the bass player is not around, you know, just go for a really nice fat bass sound. Re-record that into your DAW. If you're running native, you may have to nudge those tracks to compensate for latency. Uh, your DSP based, it, it, you should be uh, time corrected, everything should be just fine. Uh, that's my tip of the day. And again, uh, thank you so much, guys. Uh, I use this trick all the time, uh, it works really well. Uh, and again, I like drummers playing with bass players. We'll deal with isolating guitar a little later. Uh, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But to me, it's very important to have the bass cabinet not in the drum kit. Uh, and you can always, of course, isolate the cabinet, but, you know, uh, there's a real nice trick. So you get DI signal, play back through the DAW, into the bass amp, re-record two or one tracks, uh, line them up if necessary, and you've got a little extra flavor for, uh, for mixing. Again, thank you guys, uh, Tommy, Scott, Chris, Frank, and all the submitters, all you out there. Uh, this is part of my place, and we'll carry on. Thank you very much. Bye.